Welcome to another reality workshop video. I'm still working on a bumper for a J10 1974 Jeep. What I'm going to take time out today, I've been working on it. I've still got several videos to post to start with, but anyhow. I'm welding this bumper. I'm welding it with a stick welder. That is a 300D classic Lincoln diesel welder Perkins engine. I have the older ones of course. If you looked at some of my more videos I've got some more gas burners, older ones, 50 models that weld fine. Good machine. Welding with that one because well it don't burn much diesel. And it's the only one I could get running. So what I'm going to sit here and talk about is welding with a stick welder. Now you can teach about anybody to weld with a wire welder. That's a fact. Wire welders are fine. I love them. I've got a small 110 I use for body panels. I like to get a bigger miller um, and I could zip right along here. But the art of stick welding is, is, is getting lost in the uh, shuffle of wire welding. There's more to know about a stick welder. Uh, for one, you have rods. Okay, we have different rods and on the end of them, if you can see them, they, they've got, there's a 6010 red rod I call it, it's a hydrogen rod. Um, those numbers have, and I'll go into that later, I'm not gonna get into it now. I run a 7018 rod. Most of the time, we're 6011. Let me get it here. This is, uh, you can see that, ooh, I got upside down, yeah. 7018. Now, this metal here is a lot thinner. compared to say this metal right here which is a lot thicker so when you're welding thin metal which is this to thicker metal I like to take my rod and ride up on the thicker metal and flow down into my thinner metal get a good tie in so I don't burn through because I'm welding a little hotter. Every, every, every welder's got their own preference of heat, temperature, what have you. Uh, I weld a little bit hotter. And reason for that is because my rods that I use are old. They're damp. I do have a, a hot box for them, which I'll get into that someday, uh, where you dry your rods out. But for structural, what I'm doing, these rods are great. But for about anything else, you throw them away and get a fresh box if you're welding commercial. Um, or you know welding for a company <clears throat> because of liability but for me these rods weld fine what I'm building they're great now as you see I've got a tack weld here a little weld over here back and forth that's because you do not want to start on one end and just start welding down through here because you're going to warp this plate and that's not what you want so I'm gonna clean this weld up, I'm letting it cool. I'll come back and tie in here and come along here, let that cool, jump back down here, weld here, let that cool. I already did that, I zipped it up along this thick. Now I'm staying, like I said, I'm staying up on high, up on the high side, making it tie in like that because I'm using a square tubing. And as you look at the end of this, I'm welding to this piece right here where my thumb's at. And you see that little corner, how much thicker that corner is. So I'm not, you know, I'm less apt to burn a hole in it. Um, this bumper is going to be a whole lot heavier than what I thought. I'm not even going to get into, I, I quoted a, a weight before, but I've had to go in and redesign and refigure and rethink. And um, that's, that's not going to come out where I want it to be. So I'm going to probably be about a hundred more pounds over, but that's fine. I'll get my leaf springs built, carry the extra weight. 
get some overload shocks to pick it up. I've got a six cylinder, so I'm not worried. I don't have that 360 in it, you know, an extra 200 pounds. So I can make that up. Now, what I've done is I went in and I've tied pieces into this to secure the factory brackets. I've went in here and tied this. I went in and welded that. I went in there and welded and put new bolts in. <laughs> so I have uh, fresh bolts and then I put a uh, another fabrication of the brackets, two more brackets, put two more three quarter bolts in so my bumper doesn't rock. And as this goes together, it's gonna get uh, stiffer and stiffer, it's gonna get tightened up. As you add more to it, I cut, let me see if I can see here. Right, yeah, there we go. I've cut this plate, drilled holes, to, to, cause I want this bumper to come off. Now remember, I want all this to come off. If I need to tear it off, uh, I can get it off. I don't want to weld nothing directly to the frame. I don't want to weld nothing where I cannot, you know, and it has been done in the past and that's fine. Some people like to do that. And that's, that's good if they want to do that. I personally don't like welding it on solid because you know you never know when you're going to tear something up. So this is where I'm at. I'm used angle iron on top, square tubing on the bottom, and I'll come out and I'll frame it and then I'll skin it. And I have to do both sides. That's the trick. You got to repeat it on the other side. So that's what we got done today, and uh, we'll continue on with this bumper.